Welcome to the Bothell Buzz, where you hear about timely topics. Today we're going to learn a bit about emergency preparedness and meet our new fire chief, Bruce Crone. I started as a professional firefighter in 1991 with King County Fire District 40 down in Spring Glen, which is now part of Renton. And five years later in 96, I went over to Bellevue Fire Department, spent 20 years there, worked up from firefighter to lieutenant to captain uh, to battalion chief, did a, a number of jobs in the, in the way um, at that time, including PIO, which I loved. That was a great job. I loved doing that. And then in 2000. 16, I took a position with the Spokane Valley Fire Department as a deputy chief, and um, shortly thereafter, um, this position opened up and I applied here and became the Bothell Fire Chief, and I'm excited, very excited. I was in graduate school, and I was doing a paper, and I had to interview a fire chief with the city of Edmonds, and we finished the paper, and we are just talking a little bit, and he He's, he, he commented that uh, he knew I was, uh, played football, I was in team sports, and was fairly athletic, and I was in grad school, and uh, so I, I must be semi-intelligent. And he suggested a f career in the fire service, and uh, I thought about it for a minute and, uh, at the time, and then I went uh, up to Snow One. They still had a volunteer uh, department, uh, part of it, uh, volunteer program at the time and did that and really liked it. Really liked the EMS angle of it and uh, the fire angle. I loved it all. It was very exciting and I love helping people and started testing uh, right away and was lucky to get that first job at Spring Glen and there I am. When I was uh, the public information officer for the city of Bellevue in 2005, we had a, a construction crane collapse and it crossed over a busy street. Luckily, it was in the evening hours, so there, there wasn't uh, much traffic on the street. Uh, there was one citizen, unfortunately, that got killed, but the, the incident impacted several buildings on both sides of the street. Um, the crane was in the street for several days. We had uh, Seattle Fire, where they had search dogs. We had media from uh, across the area, in fact, international media there. Uh, and it was just fascinating being involved in that process and, and to saw, see how it went together and, and everything. And, I've always wanted to become a fire chief ever since I got into the fire service. I just kind of, I guess, have that personality uh, as, a, as a leader. I like to do that. Um, I was a captain of sports teams going, growing up and always involved in leadership and band or ASB or whatever it was. And I liked that. And I got into the fire service and looked around and, and saw how it, once I got in, I enjoyed being a firefighter and helping people out. But then I looked at for my career and I saw that the, the fire chief position was something that was very appealed to me a lot. And I've I set myself up and I've worked very hard to get that way. And so I'm very, I'm ecstatic to be in this position today. So far I found uh, the thing that doesn't surprise me, but the, the thing that's most pleasing to me is the great attitude of all the people I've met in the fire department. And that's from firefighters to admin, Everybody that I've met has super, super attitudes, very positive people, and I, I love that. Uh, they like to, they're engaged, uh, they want to help out citizens, and everybody works very well cooperatively together. And it's not only uh, in, in the fire department, but it's, it, it reflects in the city as well. It's, it's great to see that the fire department works well with other departments in the city, and uh, we have a, a, a real team effort here. I think we have a great future in the, the department here. In, in five years, I can see us... Uh, uh, growing with the city. The city's growing, I know that, the population is growing, and we're going to have to keep up with that. So we've got uh, equipment, we've got apparatus, facilities, and then and personnel. And one of the things I see right now is our facilities are, are getting a little bit older in the fire department, and there's, there's going to be a need to do something with those, whether it's uh, remodel, uh, new construction, or whatnot. And so I see within five years uh, having that addressed and in place. Well, I don't have maybe specific goals. I do have a vision for the department going on the future. I think we can be a leader in the area, if not in the state, uh, by our innovation and how we approach things. Uh, I think I've seen that attitude in the folks here. They're willing to accept change and grow. The fire service is changing, and I think the people I've seen here are willing to accept that change and go with it, which is going to be huge. Uh, I'd like to get a strategic plan going, and that's going to hopefully 
help us with that vision and where we're going to be in five, ten years down the road. Well, one of the things that really attracted me to Bothell, I've known the area for a long time, I've, I've grown up, I worked obviously closely on this side, but it's the feeling of community. And a lot of fire departments, uh, they don't have that anymore, and I really see that here. I came by for the 4th of July, they have a pancake breakfast here in the station, and it was packed. And I was here for half hour, 45 minutes, and it stayed packed. People came in and out, and they were, enjoyed it, and, the, and all the fire folks were here uh, cooking pancakes. The chief was here. Um, it was awesome. I, I love seeing that. I know they have a parade. It's a big deal, and I think that's really cool because, you know, it, it used to be how it was uh, back in the day, and, and I think you still kept it here. Even though the city's growing, it's going continue, to continue to grow. But I think having that sense of, of, of community and ownership uh, with, with the fire department as part of that community is just wonderful. Well, the fire department actually, uh, like most of King County and, and Washington, we're really an all-hazards uh, uh, department. So we handle everything. Anything the police doesn't, when you call 911, anything the police doesn't handle, we do. And in fact, we go with the police on a lot of their calls too. So we, just about any time you pick up 911, we, we help you out. And we, we like that. We, we, like helping the community, we like being part of that. We see people generally when they're having a bad day and try to make it better, and that's what we do. And we like being to help our citizens and the people that we, we serve, we love doing that. The City of Bothell Fire and EMS Department is there when we need them, every day. We all need to be prepared for emergencies, as you'll see in this next segment. Thanks for being with us here today, Jennifer. Thanks for having me, Barbara. So people are hearing about all sorts of disasters around the U.S. and the world. What should people in Bothell be preparing for? It's a great question. So Bothell is susceptible to a number of disasters ranging from earthquakes all the way down to the common everyday power outage. So one of the things that we want to make sure of is that you can be covered for a wide variety of disasters. So think of the earthquake, but also plan on being prepared for wind storms, power outages, winter storms, a lot of the things that happen more frequently than an earthquake. So why do people need to get prepared? That's a great question and a question that's on a lot of people's minds. So you want to be, you think government a lot of times and I need to be prepared because the government may not be able to get to us right away. But in reality, it's more than that. Number one, you are reducing your own fear and anxiety by knowing that you're prepared, you're personally prepared and your family is prepared to deal with the disaster. Number two, it can help you actually reduce your personal losses. So being prepared and having your furniture put away, your outdoor furniture put away prior to a windstorm saves on damage. It also reduces the impact uh, globally and regionally if we were to have a major disaster because you're prepared so we don't have to use first responders to come help you immediately. So how should people start preparing? That is an excellent question. So the number one thing that I always say is to have a communication plan and to make sure that you have an out-of-state contact with that communication plan. And the reason is a lot of times local phone lines are just too burdened to actually get a phone call through. But you can call out of state, you can tell that person where you're at, maybe where you're going to be meeting or how to reunify with the rest of your family. They can either relay that message back to another family member or if another family member calls them, they can kind of be that middle person to relay that information back and forth. Another great thing is to have your disaster supplies kit ready, and that's very important for you, your family, and even your pets. What kind of things are in a disaster supply kit? There's a variety of things that should be in your disaster supplies kit. Uh, number one, you want to think about your primary things. So you need food, water, and shelter, first aid. So those are the main things that you're really going to need to deal with. But otherwise, you want to think of all different kinds of things, um, ranging from can you filter water, do you have rain gear, do you have gloves in case you need to move de debris around. And also, again, always remember the elderly in your family, anybody that's on special medication, and your pets. After a big disaster, when can people expect help from the city of Bothell? Well, it can vary greatly. So depending on how big the disaster is, it could be up three days, up to two weeks. So we always say plan on being prepared at a minimum to three days. 
uh, ideally two weeks or longer. What about people with pets? What should they do for their pets to prepare? A lot of people forget about their pets in a disaster. Not that they want to take them with them. They certainly want to do that. But they forget all the little things like what kind of food do they need? Do they have water? Do you need to put them in a crate? Can they travel without a crate? Leashes, collars, all of that sort of things. Um, the other thing that you want to be cognizant of with pets is do you have their veterinary information on hand? Do you have plans for boarding them? Because a lot of shelters won't accept pets. So can you put them someplace? Can you board them? Can they go to a friend's house? Do you have options like that? Um, and then when you're dealing with large animals and transportation issues, can you even transport them? Do you have ways to transport a horse? Uh, things of that nature. So it's very important to look at all aspects, especially when dealing with your pets, because they rely solely on you for their care. Disaster preparedness seems like an overwhelming task. What kind of advice do you have for people? It really isn't an overwhelming task. It seems like it, but it's really not. There are so many different things you can do, ranging from getting one thing for your kid a month. And online we have our 12 months to disaster preparedness. And you can purchase one, thing, one item a month. You can buy things on sale. Um, you can put in decks of cards and fun things for the kids to do so you know, you're not worried about them getting bored, things like that. Um, so we have a variety of disaster kits here and I actually have three different disaster supplies kits ranging um, from something very simple to a bucket which is behind you of disaster kits and we can, you can do the pre-purchase American Red Cross kit or you can actually put together your own kit. The prices range, the American Red Cross kit I think is right around $100, um, or you can do a more comprehensive kit with all the bells and whistles and all the fun stuff um, and you know certain kinds of food or whatever supplies you want in there and that ranges as well in price. So it's really not hard to do and while it seems like a lot of stuff here, there's actually three separate kits here so it's not that bad. Great, so if you have one main message you'd like to leave with people about emergency preparedness, what would that be? Take charge of your own personal preparedness. It is vitally important that you can take care of you and your family. And I would say that would be the number one thing, is just get your kit started. Just start the process, it's really not that hard. Have that communication plan down so everybody knows where they're supposed to, who they're supposed to call and when they're supposed to call. Just do your own personal thing and it will make you feel so much better and you'll be so much further ahead in the event of a disaster. Great. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the Bothell Buzz. See you next time.